prison story time about Ivan, the KGB, and war crimes. So Ivan was at Buckingham Correctional Center with us. He was tall and skinny with a bald head, and everybody used to joke that he was in the KGB because he was from the Soviet Union, and he just had that kind of evil character look. But he was super, super smart. He spoke six languages fluently, he knew a little bit of a whole bunch of other languages, and he knew a little bit of everything. If you asked him about politics or history or language or whatever you could think of, he could tell you what he knew or he could tell you where to find the information. I met him because I worked in the law library and he was over there all the time. He was filing lawsuits, he was helping people fight their case, and he would come ask me these incredibly complex legal questions that I didn't know how to answer. I was like, dude, I, I'm just a clerk here, like I'm not an actual lawyer. And then he would also come and ask philosophical things like, what do you think the importance of beauty is in our daily lives? Like these random things that I didn't know how to respond to. Anyways, he was great because of his language skills because I did the orientation for new guys coming in. So I could translate for the Latinos coming in because I spoke Spanish, but when we get somebody from another country, I have no idea how to speak another language. I don't even know where to start. So I would just say, okay, time to get Ivan. So I would either get him from the school because he worked over at the school, or I would have him call over to the building and get him sent over, and then that way he could do the translating. So one day we had this guy come into orientation, this big, like, mercenary-looking guy, like, broad shoulders, like, scars on his face, like, a scary-looking dude. And I walked up and said, hey, you know, my name's Jesse, I do orientation, and he just responded with something I did not understand, like, not even a language I could recognize. So I was like, okay, we went back and forth, I said, okay, I don't understand, so let me go get Ivan. So I walked down, I think he was actually at the law library that day. I got him, brought him back, and he just starts talking to the guy. He goes back and forth, and everything's okay at first, and... Then all of a sudden the guy just like slams his hands on the table and stands up like beat red in the face, like looking like he's going to murder somebody, looking like he's going to tear through the table and rip Ivan's head off. And Ivan says something back and they go back and forth a couple times and the guy kind of calms down again and Ivan says something and he rears back up. And I was like, oh my God, dude, like we're talking about the grievance procedure. We're not talking about like somebody's mother or like trying to incite violence. Like, so anyways, finally get him kind of calmed down and then like, I guess they're at a peaceful truce because they say, okay, go ahead and go on with the orientation. Like everybody had gotten up and moved away because they thought this guy was actually gonna hit Ivan or was gonna like grab and break his neck. So we like went on and the whole rest of the time we're just kind of like looking over there and like he's translating, but he's still like on the other side of the table. Like they have not gotten close. They haven't done this. And they're going back and forth. And by the end of it, he actually seems kind of jovial. Like he seems like he's kind of forgiven or understood whatever happened and he's not in a bad mood. And when he walks out, he shakes my hand, which I thought was weird because he was super like standoffish in the beginning. So anyways, I go out in the hallway with Ivan and I'm like, dude, like what, what did you say? Like, what the hell? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't really think about it. He said, I know a little bit of Serbian. So I tried speaking Serbian and it turns out this guy's from Bosnia and like his family had not had a good time during the genocide or during the war. So he basically was like this man's sworn enemy or spoke the language of his sworn enemy that killed his family. So this guy who, by the way, was not in the KGB, but had had a terrible experience with the KGB, I'll tell you about, had un inadvertently like picked at the absolute worst and darkest scar this guy had, which I thought was absolutely incredible. So anyways, Ivan with the KGB, he was not a KGB agent, but he had been a translator for a government office in Soviet Russia. So while he was in the office one day, he was working away and somebody just kicks in the door and these agents come running in and they're like tearing open file cabinets and they're going through things and grabbing people up and he ends up in an interrogation room. He's telling me this story in the law library and I remember thinking like, what a bizarre life this guy has lived. So he's in the interrogation room and they're saying, oh, what did you know and who did it and how long have you known and how long have you been a part of this? And he said he finally realized like they had no idea what they were talking about. They were just trying to get him to volunteer information, but they didn't actually know anything. So he just kept saying he was innocent, kept saying he didn't know what they were talking about, kept saying, kept saying, kept saying. And it turned out somebody in his office had been accused of some serious crime of being a traitor or something. He wasn't ever sure, but several people from the office never came back. And he's thinking they might have been that original one who actually committed a crime or not. But the other ones just told on themselves. Like the, the KGB didn't know anything about what they'd actually done, but they had been like, oh yes, I'm so sorry, I stole whatever. And then they went off to the gulag or, I don't know. But basically that was the point at which Ivan said, hey, I need to get out of this. Like, what am I gonna do? And when Soviet Russia collapsed, he managed to get asylum in America because he brought his language and his skills and everything. And they saw him as an asset. How he then ended up in prison, I don't know. It's probably not a story I wanna know about, but I just remember he was one of the most bizarre and interesting people I met while I was in prison.